Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code where I teach you the underlying code you're writing a Webflow. In today's episode, we're gonna be taking a deep dive inside the accessibility panel inside of Framer. Now, if you're wanting the Webflow side of things, then I'm gonna be doing an episode on their accessibility panel or more specifically the tags. So I'll leave a link below to that episode. Full disclosure, I didn't go into the HTML docs to uncover this information. I went to mdm.org. It's just a bit more human reading a bit clearer and I'll leave links to all of the elements we discussed below so you can read it and understand it for yourself. But the idea of this episode is just to kind of break it down in terms that us as Framer users and designers can understand. Let's dive into the accessibility panel inside of Framer and start digging into some of these tags. First thing you can do is obviously go through and learn more about the accessibility stuff. Now I I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, I don't agree with what Framer has written here, more specifically the article. Uh, it's good as a generic kind of thing, but we're gonna be going deeper into some of these things. If you click on it, you can actually remove the accessibility panel, which I wouldn't recommend doing this. You've got an ARIA label here, and these are great if you were to look into ARIA. I've got an episode on ARIA roles and things like that, so you might wanna check that episode out. But ARIA labels are a great way that if you're if you're not having a label next to an input, then you can put uh, an ARIA label for that input. Tab index is actually giving uh, tab functionality to any old element and the order in which you should do it. So these are numbers here. Let's dive into the tags and start working through these one by one and start explaining them. Whenever you create a frame, is what they call it inside of Framer, what I recommend is the first thing that you do is go down and choose a tag that it should represent. Now there's a really handy image that I referred to when I was first learning what all these tags kind of do. This is the flow that goes through my mind and you'll see the very last thing on that list is a div. I'll leave a link below to this actual image but you might use it to decide what tag to choose but we'll dive deeper into the tags used inside of Framer so that you can use that information and reconcile it with this image. So an article, as I say I wasn't necessarily a fan of Framer's description of an article. A frame wrapping in an entire content of a page including title and content excluding generic stuff like navigation. I don't think an article should be used as the entire content of the page. An article is a self-contained composition of content within the content of an already existing page. So for example, like a list of blogs, each of those blogs is independent and irrespective of the other blogs, basically. I would not use it as an entire wrapper of the page. You should think of this like it's independently distributable. So if you take that article and move it anywhere, it just makes sense on its own. It doesn't need to reference or it's not in relation to anything else. You can have multiple articles on a page, like I say, like a blog posts page, and it should have a heading. If I select a bit of text, for instance, then you can select uh, the different styles here, but also the tag of a heading here. So going down, the next one we have is an aside. So I had a brief conversation with Adam Lowe in another one of my episodes about the use of an aside. I don't really care too much, but from my research and my understanding, an aside is used as complementary content to the main document of the page. So it's like subsidiary information. I will say if you're enjoying this video, a like and subscribe would do the channel wonders. If you're finding value in this episode, then consider leaving us a super thanks with the button below. Now, on with the episode. Working our way down, we've got a button, and we've spoken about this in my last episode, where a button is used to trigger interactive elements, such as forms or triggering a dialogue or something like that. We get to the glorious div, which as I say, is semantically meaningless. It's primarily used for styling and breaking up content. I'll talk about figure first because fig caption doesn't necessarily make sense without a figure. So a figure is a self-contained bit of content, similar to a side, but obviously it's related to the main content of the page. You often put images or graphics or even code snippets inside of a figure, and there's an optional caption that you can give it using a fig caption. A figure is often referenced within 
the main content of the page. So as I say, a fig caption is what we call a legend or a caption that references its parent figure. And it can only be placed either at the end or the beginning. It can't kind of be in the middle somewhere. A footer, another popular one. This represents the footer of the nearest sectioning elements. Now, what I mean by sectioning elements is only four, which is article, aside, nav, and section. And you'll see that all of these are available to us within Framer. You can put a footer inside of any of these elements. If its parent is the body, so if it's not inside of any of these things, then it will represent the footer of the page, basically. And similarly, you've got a header, which is exactly the same, but the header of the sectioning element. You often put headings within the header, a h1, a h2, or something like that, but it isn't required. Next one is main. This is quite an important one because it represents the main content of your page or your application. This is where everything kind of happens. This is where the main content is. There cannot be more than one main on the page. Now remember that I've seen instances where there's multiple mains on the page. There can't be more than one main unless one of those mains is hidden. Now with the footer, the main and the header out the way, I can basically say that my generic layout of most pages is inside my body or inside the main kind of frame of the page, I'll have a, a header, a main and a footer and everything kind of goes inside of those three elements. The next one we have here is nav. So this is the section of the page where there are links to either other pages or sections within the current page oftentimes in the head main header of the page where you've got a sticky nav. Not every area needs to have a nav. So oftentimes in the footer, you'll have a bunch of links and stuff like that. No need to have a nav there. Um, and also it's worth noting that you can have other content with inside of a nav. It doesn't necessarily need to be just a list of links. You can have a paragraph, you can have a, a header or whatever. As I say, a nav, is a main sectioning element. Finally, we get onto the section. Now, I like sections because basically they really help accessibility users jump and navigate different areas within the page. But it is less important than using a nav, an article, or an aside. Really, it's the, it's the next lowest thing before you actually get to a div when deciding what element to use in that document that I spoke about earlier. Generally, my rule of thumb is every time you have a header, wrap it in a section. It's not required to have a header within a section, but it doesn't make sense if you don't have a header. I hope this wasn't too dry, and now hopefully you have a better understanding of the different elements that you can encounter on the accessibility panel. As I say, it should be the first thing you go to whenever you create an element inside a framer, so maybe you can reference this video in the future. Cheers for sticking around, and happy no coding.